How's it, Matrix? I hope you're all well and you had a good common assessment task today. It was your last Allo paper, one last dance. And now it's all done. In today's video, we're gonna take a good look at the memo. And please note, this is a memo that I drew up and I did my very best to ensure that it is in accordance with DBE standards, with what the memo should look like. So without further discussion, let's get into it. But wait, 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 wait. I know you guys don't really care about like, the depth and all of that. You just want to know like, oh, did I get 1.1.3 right? Are my MCQs fine? Did I get the one word answers fine? So look, it's, it's going to be like that. I'm not going to explain anything in too much depth. We're just going to literally just go through the answers, what you should have written down. It won't be some crazy analysis. That's what all the other videos were for. And look, if you're watching in 2026 or 2027, yeah, this is a bit of a slapdash job. Soz. But yeah, my matrix of this year, they just want to get ready for their paper tomorrow on Tuesday. Okay, let's go. So an example of chronic stress, chronic, something that's constant, it's definitely going to be D. Also, big shout out to my student Zuleika who sent me the question paper after she had written. I really appreciate it. Thank you for allowing me to make this video on the day. 1.1.2, uh, this whole idea of environmental intervention. So if it is intervention, we're looking to stop something. We're looking to report something. It is going to be A. 1.1.3, a social media footprint. It's going to be B. It was the content that a person shares and interacts with on social media. 1.1.4, the national qualification framework, NQF. Um, it was all about recording credits of each level of learning. The answer here was going to be C. When in doubt, put C, but only for 1.1.4, that would have worked. 1.1.5, faith. Okay, it's brought the biggie Afrikaans. Hey, bro. Okay, I'm joking. That was, that was terrible. The difference between indigenous games and traditional sports is that indigenous games, what? It's going to be A. Indigenous games, they do focus on recreation. It's about having fun. Uh, traditional sports, typically standard rules like tennis, soccer, rugby, and that. Look, if you differ with these MCQs, please let me know and we can discuss it. I did utilize Grok AI, Elon Musk's AI baby, use a bit of chat GPT as well, just to double check the answers. They did agree, but their reasons were different. So look, the answers could be right, they could be wrong, but this is what is most correct, I believe. 1.2, give one word or term for each of the following descriptions. So a South African law that helps disadvantaged groups, my business kids, I hope you guys got this. It's the Employment Equity Act, the EEA. 1.2.2, the ability to understand what another person is feeling and to see things from their POV. It's all about putting yourself in their shoes. That's going to be empathy. If it was just feeling sorry for them, that would have been sympathy. 1.2.3, a collection of documents, achievements, skills, certifications, relatively easy one that you apply with. That's going to be your CV. The covering letter is this, is like that little love letter that you send your employer. 1.3, uh, defined, 1.3.1, define the term cardiovascular endurance. Um, look, it's basically the ability of the, the heart and the lungs and just, well, the circulatory, circulatory system to supply oxygen. Okay, so it's like your organs basically just supplying oxygen. 1.3.2, what's expected of you when answering a critically discussed question? Critically discuss, you need to present different perspectives, basically, and weigh evidence out. 1.3.3, uh, importance of reading questions carefully during an exam. Well, it ensures that you understand the, the keywords, the command words, the verbs, and you just avoid misinterpretation. So just the key stuff and just big no misinterps, no misinterpretation. Okay. Let's move on. 1.4, study the text below and answer the questions that follow. 1.4.1, um, look, this is just to give you context. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Give two reasons why it's considered an act of fraud if citizens are not paying taxes. Uh, well, it's it's unlawful because you're, you're legally obliged to. So, like, you're legally obliged. Like, legally, you have to do it. And it also deprives the government of funds. Look, that handwriting is atrocious. Sorry. I hope this is a bit better. Maybe I should have been a doctor because look at the state of my handwriting. SOS. Yeah, it deprives the government of funds needed for infrastructure, healthcare, and education, uh, which they don't use. They rather line their pockets and build fire pools. 1.4.1. Explain how entrepreneurs can effectively manage the tax obligations of their business. Um, you just maintain accurate financial records. So your FINREX financial records need to be shop shop. Uh, you could hire an accountant as well. And you could use digital platforms for timely submissions. So the e-filing platform that they have, like this is a bonus one. It's like e-filing. 
your parents might know about it if your parents are entrepreneurs uh, and they have to do their own taxes. 1.4.3, discuss how having responsible tax-paying citizens could benefit the country. Uh, well, there's just increased government r- revenue. So just the government money goes up, revenue is like income, and just greater levels of economic stability. Okay, and that's it for the short questions. Now, I know a few of you are probably gonna, just going to like log off now. Uh, but for those of you who want to know about the long answers, yeah, look, I... I you probably can't read it. Sorry about that. I, I really tried my best to make it as big as possible. Uh, but yeah, let's just go through the answers. Remember, this is just for context. This was the section that was literally called uh, safe and healthy living. And it kind of was like a, like a Meng cell that can overlap here with democracy and human rights. But how eating contaminated food impacts a person. So 2.1, you could get like a, like a foodborne disease. So look, I'm not going to write the whole thing, right? Because I know you guys want to study. And I, I have to tutor... And I have to make more videos for you guys because you're writing English FAL, Afrikaans FAL poems on Wednesday, my accounting P2 kids are writing tomorrow, uh, history on Thursday, and of course, mathematics on Friday, and then the paper two on the Monday. So yeah, let's, let's, vamanos amigos, hablo espanol, si, okay, uh, foodborne diseases, uh, it weakens your immune system as well. Okay, uh, 2.2, describe one possible benefit. Just a, a lack of enforcement. Sorry, describe one possible benefit of small businesses in communities. Well, there's just employment opportunities available. And while the circular flow of money is is moving, my economics, kid will, my economics kids will like that. There's more income in the economy. We're pushing things in and about. So yeah, the economy, it'll, it's going to grow. 2.3, explain one factor that could increase xenophobic attitudes toward foreign business owners within communities, a huge issue in South Africa. I will believe that they are stealing jobs, which in South Africa is definitely not the case. South Africans just don't want to work. They don't want to do um, lower paying minimum wage type jobs and just stereotypes, believing that foreigners are here to do things. I mean, we all know the the slurs, I'm a quere quere and all that nonsense. It's ridiculous. I really hate it. But yeah, foreigners are here to make a living in Mzansi. I mean, if South Africa was a really tough, terrible place with no economic opportunity, you best believe I'd be somewhere else. So yeah, saying, you know, that they're, they're murderers, they're selling illegal substances and all that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to hear it. Look, let's just focus on the memo. 2.4. Discuss the possible impact of discrimination on the mental well-being of victims of xenophobia. Well, it could lead to levels of depression, anxiety, trauma, and it lowers self-esteem. So dep for depression and just a lower trust in society. You become just more fearful. I mean, think about kicking a puppy over and over again. It's going to grow up to be an adult dog that is just, well, constantly anxious of being another victim of being a victim of violence. Shame, poor puppy. 2.5, assess the responsibility of the media in creating awareness on safe and healthy living. Well, the media should report factually to avoid any kinds of stereotypes and utilize campaigns and other documentaries to educate the public. Uh, 2.6, two ways NGOs can help communities prevent xenophobia. So just organizing, like again, more like multicultural awareness campaigns so just spreading awareness about it, coexisting with people from different spheres of life and living, uh, and providing counseling to those who are actually victims of xenophobic violence, which is a huge, 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 huge issue in South Africa. Okay, look, I love the Zimbabweans, the Zambians, the Malawians, the Namibians, from Swazi, from Lesotho, from Mozambique, from Nigeria. I love all of you. Thank you for coming to South Africa and making it ever so multicultural. Especially the Nigerians. I love jollof. Love jollof rice. Next. 3.1. Human factors causing ill health. Uh, it's lifestyle choices. So basically like just smoking and diet. Or oh, alcohol abuse, all of that. Describe one potential long-term health risk for smokers. Well, lung cancer. There's others like chronic bronchitis, cardiovascular diseases. 3.3. Why young smokers are likely to experiment with e-cigarettes. This is for all of you with your vape. You're probably vaping and watching this right now with your grape smoke everywhere. Well, probably peer pressure. Like, you know, your your chums are doing it, your bras are doing it, so you want to do it as well. Terrible. Uh, And just social influence. Believing that uh, all vaping is safer than smoking. And just, like, attractive flavors as well. You know, you, you want to smell like, like, uh, cherry. <laughs> you want to smell like a, like a cherry apple. I'm actually writing cherry in my answer. Like, attractive flavors, basically. Uh, 3.4, two wrong messages on social media that promotes smoking. Um, well, you know, it's, it's cool. It, it looks glamorous. They, 
they glamorize smoking on social media and that smoking you know it, it relieves stress and boosts confidence you know because you've got that like nicotine push okay it, it's partially true but it's more damaging to your health more than anything else 3.5 Two measures schools can implement to prevent smoking, um, anti-smoking education, which is absolutely key. They could also choke slam kids who are, are smoking. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm not promoting violence here. I'm joking, that was a joke. Uh, suggest that, <laughs> sorry, that was a terrible joke. Uh, provide access to counseling as well uh, for learners that are, you know, at risks or, you know, learners that are battling with some kind of nicotine addiction and just, well, generally educate them. 3.6, assess the significance of a personal lifestyle plan in helping young people to avoid substance abuse. So again, it's your big three answers here. It's it's about sleeping, living, and eating. Look, just make better lifestyle choices. Get your typical sleep of like the usual eight hours a day, fall into routine. Um, like the way you live, stay away from peer pressure, all that bad stuff, go to school, stay in school, don't do... And I don't want to say that word because then video will get flagged, you know, follow a healthy diet and all of this will lead to like, lead to greater life satisfaction. And then yeah, you'll be happier. That's what a personal lifestyle plan is. Surround yourself with friends, go play sports. Yeah. And that's it. That's what a personal lifestyle plan is. It's, it's this, this whole SLE thing. Next, labor laws. Uh, briefly state four ways in which employers could ensure that labor laws are su successfully implemented within their organizations. Okay, um, so ways they can ensure labor laws are implemented. Look, I'm just going to go through like four points. So employers can ensure, I am not. I won't write anything. They can ensure that labor laws are followed by first educating and training staff and management on workplace rights. Uh, they can create clear workplace policies that comply with the BCEA. Uh, organizations should establish grievance procedures so that workers feel safe to report unfair treatment and they can conduct regular compliance audits before they escalate. Next, uh, impact of inappropriate trade union behavior. So nice long answer here. Um, so while trade unions are established to protect workers, inappropriate behavior by some members can definitely harm the work environment. So if union members engage in intimidation or violence, it creates fear and division among employees, which lowers morale and productivity and furthermore, misuse of union power can lead to conflicts with management, uh, disrupt workplace harmony and trust. And, you know, these negative behaviors, they also undermine the credibility of unions and making it difficult for some genuine labor issues to actually be addressed effectively. Uh, that's the best that I could come up with. And I think that's going to be as closely aligned with the memo. Um, bullet three, impact on a young worker reporting violations. So when a young worker reports labor law violations, the impact can be both positive and negative. On the positive side, the worker may feel empowered for standing up for their rights and their actions may lead to improved working conditions for all employees. However, there are risks. The worker may face victimization, such as bullying, reduced work hours, or even dismissal. And reporting violations may also cause stress and anxiety if there's no proper protection for whistleblowers. Hashtag Babita Diokaran. It is therefore essential that young workers can support or are supported through laws that protect them from retaliation. Yeah, I mentioned this extensively in my other videos. Okay, question five, uh, the whole thing about being cyber savvy. So uh, state four ways to maintain cyber safety while developing online skills. So use strong, unique passwords, avoid sharing personal info, install and update antivirus, and be cautious of those like phishing emails that may want to steal your data. Next, uh, analyze how being cyber savvy could help young people to counteract unemployment. Well, they could access remote work opportunities and being cyber savvy allows young people to explore freelance work, maybe online tutoring like I do, and content creation and digital marketing. This just reduces reliance on scarce local job markets and enables them to compete globally. And regarding uh, another big point here, entrepreneurship and, and self-employment, the second big point, young people with strong levels of digital literacy can create online businesses such as e-commerce stores or maybe app development ventures. And these skills help them generate income independently instead of waiting for traditional levels of employment. Uh, C, or rather bullet point three, uh, evaluate the significance of print media in advancing digital world. Even I'm struggling to read it. You know. Okay, uh, two big points here. Continuing relevance in accessibility for everyone. So print media remains significant in rural or underdeveloped areas where internet access is extremely limited and newspapers and magazines still provide information to populations typically excluded from digital platforms, ensuring inclusivity. Second big one here, I think, is trust and credibility. So despite this digital boom, this digital growth, 
Print media is often regarded as more reliable before it undergoes strict editorial checks compared to the rapid, sometimes unverified nature of online news. And this credibility, it maintains its importance in just shaping our general public opinion. I think one of the easier essays there, question five. Question six, uh, quickly, briefly state four factors to consider when adding someone as a reference in your CV. So choose a reference who knows your professional abilities and character, ensure they're re reputable, they hold a respectable position, uh, ask for permission as well, and provide accurate and updated info so it's easy to contact them. Next, uh, analyze the importance of researching a company's mission statement when applying for available jobs. Two points here. Alignment with company culture, so understanding a mission statement, the whole VMGO thing that I explained in the other videos, it allows applicants to assess whether their values, they match the organization's ethos. And this ensures some level of job satisfaction and long-term commitment if hired. Now, tailoring applications, so researching a mission statement, so this is the second point, tailoring applications, it helps applicants personalize cover letters and interviews, and it shows genuine interest, and employers are therefore more likely to hire candidates who demonstrate understanding of the organization's goals. Uh, last one, uh, evaluate why an employer may choose to hire a candidate with previous work experience. So big two things here. One, uh, reducing training costs and time. So candidates with work experience require less orientation and can adapt quickly. And this increases productivity for the company. And second big one here, they, they have a proven track record. So experienced candidates, they bring established skills, professional discipline and reliability. And employers value their demonstrated ability to perform in real world contexts therefore reducing risks compared to inexperienced applicants. And that's the memo. Um, more like essay style paragraphs. I hope you followed the whole IBC method. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I tried to make it as to the point to the T as possible, answers only. Yeah, look for the 2026 matrix. I'll, I'll promise you I'll make like a proper in-depth memo for all of this. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you, well, some of you, hopefully you nail down like your 100%, whatever, your 90, your distinctions. You know, they say aloe is an easy A, but I, I disagree. It really required some level of work. But yeah, if it didn't go all that well, put your head down, keep going, keep moving. There's still a long road ahead. We've got the rest of prelims and we've still got finals on the horizon. You got this. I believe in you. Cheers.